everyone welcome back to my channel i'm rissa b if you didn't already know and if you haven't make sure you subscribe down below in today's video i'm telling you how i became a clinical laboratory scientist with a biology degree and without a cls degree or certification i'll also be giving out some tips to those who don't have a cls degree but want to get into this field of work so this is something that you're interested in and this is a career that you're thinking about. Definitely stay tuned to see how I became a CLS without a certification. I have a degree in biology. That is what I went to undergrad for. It was pre-med when I first started. About halfway through, I decided I didn't want to do pre-med and that I was going to eventually go into nursing. So all of my undergrad volunteer experience and club experience and involvement revolved around um, health related things but nothing to do with the lab. After I graduated with my four year degree, I started taking prereqs for the nursing program and I started looking at accelerated nursing program. Eventually I moved to be closer to the school that I got accepted into, um, finished my prereqs there and applied for the nursing program. Also, if you want some tips on the HESI exam, I got a 90, above a 90 on every section that I took. So I can definitely make a video giving you some tips about that along with why I decided to go with CLS instead of continuing with the nursing path that I was on. When I came upon the CLS career, I decided to do a bit more research. And I'm not going to go too much into what a CLS is and what this type of job does because I'm assuming if you're on this video, you've been doing a bit of research of your own. But I will say that the key thing that I found when doing my research is that not all states and not all labs require you to actually be certified or have a CLS degree. That means if you have some sort of science degree related, you can apply for these jobs. And so that's what I was faced with. I was either going to go through a second degree program for CLS and get a degree that way and then be able to sit for my exam to become certified or I was going to start applying for jobs. So that's what I did. I started applying for jobs and I gave myself a deadline. I said if, my, if I didn't have a job by the time that my nursing program started, then I was just going to go ahead and continue with nursing and leave CLS in the past. I apply almost every day from the end of January, beginning of February, all the way up until I got my job offer, which wasn't until April. So just know that it's not going to be a quick, you know, walk in the park. It is going to take some time, but it's definitely doable. I'm going to give you the top five tips on what I think is most important when going through the job search if you don't have a CLS degree. The first tip that I have is if you are applying for jobs and looking at jobs, pay attention to the job description. You want to apply for jobs that say something along the lines of ASCP cert or related life science degree. What this means is although they want someone or they would like someone who has a certification in this type of work, it means that they're willing to take people who don't have this certification and who just has a life science degree, such as biology, chemistry, molecular biology, microbiology, immunology, and so forth and so on. So if this applies to you, go for it. And you'll be surprised how many jobs actually say this in the job description. My next tip would be, if you're still taking your undergraduate classes, you wanna try and work or volunteer in some of the labs that you have. This will give you some lab experience and will definitely look good on your resume when you are applying to these jobs. It will also give you a little bit of more insight about what you may be doing on a day-to-day -day basis, depending on what type of lab you go into or where you wanna work. Um, and what type of specialty you may want to work in. If I could go back to my undergraduate times, I would definitely try and work in a lab or be a teacher's assistant in a lab. Any one of those things will definitely be good experience and will definitely help boost your resume when you're applying to these jobs and you don't have a CLS certification. That brings me to my third tip and that is your resume. Even though you don't have a CLS certification, you want to make sure that your resume shows that you are competent and familiar with common instruments that you will encounter in a lab. And so what I mean by this is I had no lab experience outside of the labs that I took for certain classes in college. After I graduated school, I did regular, you know, retail and banking jobs. Those were my main jobs that I did after school. I had no type of lab experience. So when I started applying to these jobs, 
I made sure that my resume showed and listed certain skills that I acquired from my classes. And so what I mean by this, on my resume, I would have my school listed, I would have my degree, and I would put relevant skills. And I listed things such as micro pipette, um, centrifuge, thermocycler, um, gel electrophoresis. Things like that. This shows that you don't have, you know, just basic lab skills such as pipette, graduated cylinder, but that you have a bit more of advanced. It shows that you've taken a bit more advanced labs during your time of undergraduate, even though you didn't have a degree that focused solely on lab work and things like that. So make sure that if you're still an undergraduate, write down some important equipment and procedures that you think. Ooh. So listing these different instruments and procedures and techniques that you've technically had experience in, even though it was just for a class, will definitely help you when you're applying to these different jobs and will definitely make your resume stand out if you don't have your certification or don't have a CLS degree. My fourth tip would be be aware of your location. And so what I mean by this is, like I said before, not all states require you to have a certification, the same with some labs not requiring you to have a certification. At the time that I made the decision to go with the CLS route, I was living in Las Vegas. Las Vegas does not have a lot of lab positions that I was interested in. So I did not apply to a lot out there. I applied to a few, but there weren't that many that really caught my eye that I really want to work at. And I also didn't want to live there anymore anyway. Compared to where I am now, there's a ton of hospitals, there's a ton of labs, a ton of clinics. Like there is a plethora of locations where I was able to apply to. And ultimately that's where I ended up accepting my job. Actually, the only job offers that I did get are not job offers, interviews that I did get were in this new location. I didn't get any back in Nevada. So definitely be aware that some states are more suitable for this type of work, especially if you don't have a certification, than other states will be. And in no way am I telling you to move across the country or move out of state just for the CLS job. But if that's something that you want to do or you find that it's the best or you even find that maybe CLS isn't for you because you don't have a lot of opportunities where you live at, then that's something to consider. Or it may be if you are limited in jobs where you are, you might have to go back and get a, at least a second degree certification. That way you could become licensed and have more job opportunities awarded to you. My fifth and final tip is to keep applying you are going to get a ton of no's. I got a ton of no's. You could be lucky and you may not get that many no's. But like I said earlier, I applied um, you know, from February all the way to April. Up until that point, all I got were no's. I literally got my interviews and email for interviews the first week of April from two or three job locations. Before that, I got nothing. Definitely keep going, you'll find something. It may take some time. You might have to do like I did and maybe set like a deadline for yourself. If the job isn't working out for you, go ahead and maybe apply to go to CLS school. They have programs online and in person certain schools where if you already have a degree in a science, you can go back and get basically an accelerated path. That way it won't take a whole another four years for you to get your BS degree. As I mentioned before, some jobs do want people who are certified or prefer people who are certified. So even though they do list, you know, that related life sciences is in their job description, if someone else applies with the same resume and they have a certification or a license, it is a chance, it's highly likely actually, that they will get the job above you. Some jobs don't care about either of those things, but they want someone with experience. So again, if you have the same resume as someone and they have lab experience and you don't, then they may get the job over you. And then there are some labs, like my lab, who to me, they're just looking for someone who is competent, knows what they're talking about, and is familiar with the lab in general. With some of the instruments and techniques that I had listed, they even asked me what classes I took those in and like what were my favorite classes in college. So definitely when you're listing these skills and instruments and techniques on your resume, don't just list anything because you think it'll get you a job. 
make sure what you're listing you are familiar with and you can give some type of insight if asked about it. I will say that a lot of forms, um, I didn't come across too many forms in general. A few that I did come across, they did say that your best bet is to go back to school and get your cert. Um, I think for certain people that it's the best bet. So applying to a job without um, licensure or certification is definitely possible. Don't let that be your deterring factor. All right, guys, that's all for today's video. I really hope you found this video to be useful to you. If you have more questions or video suggestions, definitely feel free to leave them down below. I know some people told me they wanted a more detailed video of the vlog CLS video that I uploaded and I will definitely get around to doing that and explaining everything that I'm doing in the video. I'll also give a updated vlog because I am no longer doing those lab stations at my current job. I am training and in a whole different um, laboratory room than that video in just a month's time. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below, and I will see you in my next video.